Today we're doing this video just talking about shotgun stopping power. And for uh, purposes of uh, this video, we're going everything we're going to use is 12 gauge. Because that's the most common for a fighting shotgun. And we're not talking about hunting or anything like that. Uh, we're talking about a fighting shotgun. They're very popular. We've done uh, recent reviews on the uh, Caltech KSG and uh, the Mossberg 930 SPX, the Remington Versamax. All good shotguns. They all work very well. I don't have my KSG now. The local uh, sheriff's department wanted to bar it and try it out, see if they like it. So they got it. But we're going to be using the Versamax today for the shooting we're going to be doing. Now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, stopping power of a shotgun because I've had so many people. I've, I recommend if over penetration might be a problem, you live in an apartment building or something like that, to use a bird shot for defense. Well, I've had people uh, saying that bird shot is useless, it spreads too fast. Um, which in truth it don't spread any faster than buckshot. They both spread at the same rate. We're going to prove that to you today uh, They've also said that it won't penetrate one guy said it wouldn't penetrate a pizza box I don't know where he lives what they're making pizza boxes out of maybe cast iron I don't know around here. They're cardboard and uh, about anything will blow right through it But anyway, we've had a lot of stuff like that a lot of myths out there people said that uh, uh, Bird shot don't do any good in ballistic jail. I know nobody made out of ballistic jail uh, some kind of simulation thing, it wouldn't do any good. I know nobody that's made out of a simulated computer type stuff. We're going to shoot some meat today to show that it will penetrate. We're going to shoot meat, we're going to shoot bone. We're going to talk about various things. I'll zoom down here a minute, Bone's going to talk about some of these loads. One of the best combo loads is, uh, that I like is this uh, Winchester PDX-1. And with it, you get a, a one ounce slug, and on top of that, you get three double off buckshot, plated buckshot, and the way it patterns on target, you always get the slug in the middle and the the three uh, buckshot are circled around it like a satellite. So if you don't know if you want buckshot or slug on a combo that you got both at the same time, you got that. Now, uh, we also got a good uh, buckshot load here. This is the Federal 9 pellet, 2 and 3 quarter buckshot load. That's the most common, what most people use. You can go to 3 inch and get a 12 pellet. Uh, you can go to three and a half inch. They've got an 18 pellet now. Well, most people use the two and three quarter because um, you got the nine 33 caliber buckshot. They do a good job. Now we'll talk a little bit about the bird shot. If over penetration might be a problem, if you're afraid something might go through a wall and kill your neighbor, uh, sometimes where, where I live, you know, sometimes got grandkids down the hall or something. And I use in my uh, personal shotgun I keep by the bed is loaded with bird shot. This is the Remington STS load. Um, it's a, a target load, it's an ounce and an eighth of shot, and that, at a typical cross the room distances, that ounce and an eighth, which is uh, in this size shot, is a little over 400 pellets hits in one cluster. And it's uh, about 500 grains or better of weight, uh, and it's going to hit in a cluster and do a good job. A lot of people don't believe that, so we're going to set out to prove that today. Now we'll talk a little bit about shot sizes. Bog zoom over here on the board a little bit. Those shock sizes we was talking about. Now th this is a this is to scale but it's not actual actual pellet sizes that we've got here. Now like uh, for your uh, buckshot um, number four is a good load and the FBI used to carry that. I don't know if they still do or not but number four you get more pellets. You get in a two and three quarter inch shell you'll get 34 pellets of number four which is about 24 caliber as opposed to uh, nine pellets of the double off. Uh, number four is pretty devastating. Now, if uh, maximum penetration is what you need, then go for the bigger shot or slug. But if not, number four is a good combination between the small sizes of the uh, bird shot and the larger uh, 33 caliber double off. Number four, like I said, is 24 calibers. 34 of them in the three inch shell, you get 41 of those. So that's a lot of shot going out there. It's more weight because the way they load into the shell, you can get more of them in there. Plus, you got a lot more hits. Anyway, it's just that's some real good choices, and and you can go anywhere in between. You know, you don't have to choose either double out or either bird shot. Like I said, you can get the number four uh, buck, or you can get some uh, larger uh, bird shot, like for hunting turkey loads and stuff, like number two shot BB, number four things like that that penetrate really well. But anyway, it's just there's a lot of choices in shotgun ammo, and at close range, there's nothing more devastating that we can legally own than a shotgun for fighting. Now one of the myths that has come up in the topics here lately is that bird shot spreads too quickly. 
and that's false. It don't spread any any quicker than does a buckshot. Now we're standing here, a typical cross of a room, nice big room, about 21 to 25 feet of your bedroom, you know, could be about half that. But we're gonna show that it don't spread out. You know, people have said that you it'll spread so much, you only get two or three pellets in the target. That's crazy. So we're gonna shoot a little, we got a Remington ounce and eighth STS here, a number eight shot. We're gonna shoot that first, and then we're gonna follow it with a nine pellet uh, buckshot load, double off buckshot. We're gonna impact the target. The first shot will be the bird shot, the second shot will be the buck shot. There's the bird shot. There's the buck shot. Now, as you can see here, at that distance, they both got about the same spread. You get a few, a few pellets out here uh, on the bird shot, but the main one of them, and this is an open bore choke, it's not any. Uh, constriction all to this choke, um, they're right there clustered in the middle. Now we're going to talk about the penetration a little bit. A lot of people says that it won't penetrate anything as we talked to about just a few minutes ago. We're going to shoot some meat now. Let's go down here, Boach. Okay, I've got some meat here in this sack. And what I did, uh, I wanted to have bone in it, just like a rib cage. I've got a rack of ribs in there, pork ribs, and behind it, a pork shoulder. Now I couldn't, you know, didn't have any extra cadavers laying around. I'm fresh out of them. So pork's the closest thing we could use to this. These ribs are out of about a 250 pound hog. So they're good uh, solid ribs, just like a rib cage I've got here. And right under the rib cage in a human being is soft tissue. It's real soft, like lungs and heart and stuff. It's not gonna be as tough as this pork shoulder. We're gonna shoot the pork shoulder anyway. Now I've got denim uh, wrapped around it. So it's like if you had on a shirt or something, your rib cage right under it, and then the pork shoulder behind it. Now, a lot of people have you believe that's just going to bounce off and do no harm. I've got it all hanging here in an onion sack. Not many people wear an onion sack, but that'll hold it for me while I shoot this. And we're going to show the penetration. I'm going to go through this denim, this heavy weight blue jean denim, through the bones in the rib cage into the pork shoulder. We're going to shoot it with a Remington target load, ounce and an eighth of shot. I'm backed off here again, about 21 feet from the target, which is like across the living room or something. Again, your bedroom. You're going to be about half that close. Now, if you're out at 40, 50 yards, true, um, the bird shot is not what you want. But we're talking about inside a dwelling, somebody breaks into your house, in your home. You don't want anything to overpenetrate him and go through walls and kill somebody. You don't want an accidental miss shot. Uh, the bird shot will penetrate walls, so don't think that it's going to bounce off walls. It'll go through the walls, but once it does, those pellets lose steam quickly and they're not going to go through two or three walls and kill somebody but they are effective on meat. Now you can see the surface wound right here. It blowed this denim apart. You can see the hole down in the meat. We're gonna cut it open. And it goes against everything I believe in to run $25 worth of good pork. But there's so many goober smokers out there that hadn't tried this, but they, they keep repeating myths that bird shock's no good for defense, and it's just crazy. Uh, it makes holes in meat, it makes holes in flesh and bone. And we're gonna show you this. Now, here's the rack of ribs, and you can see a few pellets dispersed around here, but most of them are there in the middle. There's the shotgun wad that come out of it. There's the rib bones. Dog's gonna eat good tonight, I guess. And then here, we'll get down into the meat. We're going down in there a good, a good four inches down into that meat, and it also hit the shoulder bone down in here. Chewed up that shoulder bone, it's busted up pretty bad. Deflected, there's bone fragments all down in there. And keep in mind that what's behind a rib cage in a human is not this soft. Uh, I mean, it's softer than this tissue. This is a, didn't over penetrate back here, but it went in a good four inches down into the meat. Now. Busted that bone, and, and besides going through the meat, it busted that shoulder bone wide open there. It's devastating. If that hit heart, lung, stuff like that, after going through the rib cage, uh, it tears up a lot of stuff in there. Now you can see it right here. Now, if you don't believe it, there it is. You don't have to use a bird shot. I use bird shot inside the house. It's what I like. It's the best thing to use, and uh, it's what we got here. 
So anyway, we showed it here. We run some really good meat, and uh, we did it to prove the birdshot is effective. It don't spread any further than buckshot. It penetrates well in flesh, goes through bone, still penetrates well. Went through the denim, went through the onion sack. Uh, if you if somebody comes in there wearing a pizza box, I don't know what you're going to do. Might not go through a cardboard pizza box like one guy said, but but that's that's just crazy myths that people repeat without trying it. It's not ballistic gel. It's not a simulator. It's actual meat. And, uh, and it works. So anyway, there it is. We've, uh, we've proved what I set out to prove today because I knew it would work. I've done it before. I've shot in the meat before. But we wanted to show everybody to uh, maybe convince some of the non-believers out there that it will work. And it, it doesn't overspread. It doesn't overpenetrate. But it will penetrate far enough to do the damage you need done. It does a good job on this. And we've sure run some good pork shoulder today.